So unfortunately, I have to be a bit of a creepy person and do a video in my car. I feel a little bit like Dorothy in comics, <laughs> but the kids are up in the house. And so that's a lot of noise and I'm not going to have time to record a video if I don't do it right now. So I was thinking of doing part two of examples of bad storytelling. And then I found this uh, interview by one of the writers at the DC's Young Animals imprint that is getting ready to be shut down at least for a little while until they decide to bring it back more SJW-like like they're doing with Vertigo. And there's something that he was talking about in the process of writing his stories. And it's actually pretty rock solid. Now, I've never read Cave Carson, but the idea of starting with an overarching story and then breaking it down into arcs and issues, then pages, and then individual panels... You know, it's essentially storytelling 101. And that's why I want to talk about a part two of examples of bad storytelling. So I did get rid of those other comics that I showed last time because I just, I couldn't bear looking at them anymore. And so I'm going to do the same with these bug, The Adventures of Forager. And I just want to talk a bit about storytelling and bad storytelling in a way of stories not having meaning. I bought this because I thought that I liked the first issue. And this, I do believe, came out during the time that they were doing the uh, celebration of Jack Kirby. Bug is one of the New Gods characters. And so I was thinking, okay, it seemed interesting. I'd read, you know, I'd read the New Gods special. I'd read a cup. I'd bought digitally a couple of the originals that Jack Kirby had done. Same thing with Mr. Miracle because, you know, the Tom King Mr. Miracle was coming out. And so I wanted to get a sense of what Jack Kirby was going for before I looked at the tribute versions. And this was a six issue run and unfortunately I have the first five before I <laughs> before I stopped myself and said, well maybe you should see if you like it. I bought the other four after number one because I thought I liked number one. And what I really like is pretty much the first page. Of because you have the introduction of this character, Bug. And if you don't know who Bug is, this is sort of like a great introduction into who he is. But then it gets killed, so to speak, by this oh-so-random story that makes absolutely no sense. And not only that, it's the dialogue as well. The first time I read it, I don't think I paid attention to the dialogue, but I just tried to reread it. And the dialogue, it's terrible. You know, so he comes out of this cocoon, can't breathe, gasp, gasp. That makes sense. Then he looks at himself, he looks at himself, says, gross. Then, but hey, Looks like I didn't die after all. Cool. Okay. That's terrible. <laughs> That's all I can say. You know, and then he continues to talk to himself. And it wouldn't be 
as bad if not for the fact that we are seeing there's a cocoon, a cocoon. Did I spin it? I don't know that I could do that. But we're seeing a cocoon. And then, you know, talking about, oh, where am I? Oh, I'm in a basement. But he's telling us that he's in a creepy basement. And then he's reading the Christmas card that we can clearly see, you know, and then saying, well, I never heard of them. Well, wouldn't imagine that you would. And it's little things like that. It's the, the, <laughs> as the Versi in comics calls it, the, Di the Disney tweens oh so random kind of thing. And it wouldn't be such a problem if not for the fact that this imprint is supposed to be for mature audiences. And when you look at what they call themselves, they call themselves as an imprint, essentially comics for quote unquote dangerous readers. No wonder they're failing and no one's buying them. mainly because of stories like this, mainly because of stories like Eternity Girl, mainly because of what they did to Doom Patrol. You have a lot of, you have a lot of stories that are trying, where they're trying too hard to be edgy. And there's a fine line of being edgy. And if you want to do edgy, then you should be edgy in the first place, not have the appearance of what you think being edgy is, or you should know about those actual subcultures. You know, Mags likes to think that he's punk rock, but when you compare him to someone like a Gavin McInnes, who, you know, clearly was punk rock and you can tell he had lived his whole life in that subculture of being punk rock, the way that he speaks, the way that he behaves, you know, it's vastly different where a Gavin McInnes is still a rebel to this day, you have these SJWs who talk about being edgy, talk about being rebels, and yet even in one of the um, even in one of the comics, they talk about conform, you know, conformity being, you know, one of the best types of rebelling. And you and it's sort of like they really have no idea what they're talking about. But that's beside the point. I'm talking about bad storytelling. And bad storytelling is in these kind of things that kind of bug me. And another series that has bugged me is I mentioned Mr. Miracle by Tom King. So I'm throwing Tom King now into this category with both his Batman run and the and his run on uh, Mr. Miracles because Mr. Miracle came out with a bang and it was beautiful, it was quirky, it was a bit disturbing, it was a mystery. You wanted to know what was going on. The problem is in Bug the Adventures of Foragers, Unfortunately, it quickly becomes apparent that there is no real story or no real story that makes sense. Everything is just kind of like quirky and makes no sense. Mr. Miracle, it took a while for you to figure out that 12, a 12 issue maxi series was not something that Tom King can do well. Likewise with the Batman, where now we're saying it's a hundred arc story and people are tired of him at 50 because it's clear he doesn't have a story. A story isn't just hero saves the world. Like I think what they were trying to go for with Bug the Forager is, 
you know, hero saves the universe. Hero goes on an adventure. Okay. That's a plot point. That's like an overarching plot. That's not an actual true story. If that makes sense. And especially if you're talking about things that are supposed to be edgy. And I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the thoughts and I'm not, um, I don't want this video to be too long, but it goes back to what I said about character, you know, about characterization. Hero goes on a journey is just a basic. Superhero saves the world is just a basic. And part of the reason I say it's not a story is because there's needs to be a reason why the character does it. Bug the Forager or the Adventures of Forager is all about Bug supposedly discovering who he is in his identity. That's a different story than quirky, oh so random, trying to be edgy, but completely failing in it. I mean, seriously, look at this. This is supposed to be a comic for dangerous people and the girl is pointing and it says, bear there. And they do tons of silly stuff like that. I don't know who they consider to be dangerous. Whatever, I'm getting ready to get rid of these. <laughs> but I'll close. Reasoning is important. There needs to be a reason for the story. The reason that Mr. Miracle by Tom King started off great is because you had a mystery. And at some point, you know, there needed to be a payoff. But there doesn't appear to be a payoff. So there doesn't appear to really be a story that's willing to pull and draw people in. That becomes a bit of a problem because, and again, I've not read Cave Carson, but I liked what the writer of it had said, you know, where you need a reason, I'm not going to turn back to it, but you need a reason for the readers to turn the page, you know, and it sounds like you know, he at least put a lot of thought and effort into the kind of story that he was building. When I go through my series on characterization and actual, you know, delving deep into the idea of storytelling and things like that, I'm going to pull in, you know, like some things from manga. And um, I have a great book where they talk about characters. And, you know, essentially some of the best storytellers will tell you, you have to have an actual story. You have to have characters with fatal flaws. You have to understand the people that you're working with in the fiction. You have to understand the world and how they're interacting with it. If you don't have any idea of that, and this goes for both properties that you are creating and properties that you are kind of inherit inheriting. If you have no idea about who the people are and what their motivations are or anything like that, you don't really have a story and you will inevitably have a ton of failed materials. From what I understand, DC is closing Young Animals only to probably turn around and open it back up at a later date. But it's probably not going to change because SJWs never learn their lessons. And that's a bit of a problem. 
anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. I should hopefully be able to do a video tomorrow in the house and not in my car. My brother has is unfortunately leaving my car a absolute mess with all his stuff, but I'll just, <laughs> I'll go. Oh my God, this is killing me so much. <laughs> Bye.